Section one of Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. To Memory by Mary Coleridge. Read by Newgate Novelist. Strange power, I know not what thou art, murderer or mistress of my heart i know i'd rather meet the blow of my most unrelenting foe than live as now i live to be slain twenty times a day by thee yet when i would command thee hence thou mockest at the vain pretence murmuring in mine ear a song once loved alas forgotten long and on my brow i feel a kiss that i would rather die than miss end of poem this recording is in the public domain la ghetto by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist grant me but a day love but a day ere i give my heart my heart away ere i say the word i'll ne'er unsay is it earnest with me is it play did the world in arms cry to me stay not a moment then would i delay yet for very love i say thee nay ere i give my heart my heart away grant me but a day love but a day end of poem this recording is in the public domain slowly by mary coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Heavy is my heart, dark are thine eyes Thou and I must part ere the sun rise Ere the sun rise, thou and I must part Dark are thine eyes, heavy my heart End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gone by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. About the little chambers of my heart, friends have been coming, going, many a year. The doors stand open there. Some, lightly stepping, enter some depart freely they come and freely go at will the walls give back their laughter all day long they fill the house with song one door alone is shut one chamber still End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Moment by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The clouds had made a crimson crown above the mountains high. The stormy sun was going down in a stormy sky. Why did you let your eyes so rest on me? and hold your breath between in all the ages this can never be as if it had not been end of poem this recording is in the public domain there was no place found by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist one night as dreaming on my bed i lay i saw the whole world die and pass away young men and old true lover and fair maid passed in an endless passing unafraid 
and as they went each to his radiant home they hailed me after calling to me come some sought a land of living light where none remembers more the shining of the sun some sought a land of living light and there longed for the dark to hide their bright despair at last i lay upon the ground alone no voice the empty silence cried be gone then i arose and turned about to flee on either hand there was no place for me the shining one said sadly all too late none enter heaven but through the narrow gate the fiery one said sadly all too fast there is no need of hell while earth shall last end of poem this recording is in the public domain morning dreams by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i asked of night that she would take me where i could not go by day i asked of day he should not wake me ere the sun was on his way for as the sun steals from the flowers the crystal dew by which they live he kills the memory of those hours which night for my delight will give end of poem this recording is in the public domain come home by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist when wintry winds are no more heard and joys in every bosom when summer sings in every bird and shines in every blossom when happy twilight hours are long come home my love and think no wrong when berries gleam above the stream and half the fields are yellow come back to me my joyous dream the world hath not thy fellow and i will make thee queen among the queens of summer and of song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the other side of a mirror by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i sat before my glass one day and conjured up a vision bare unlike the aspects glad and gay that erst were found reflected there the vision of a woman wild with more than womanly despair her hair stood back on either side a face bereft of loveliness it had no envy now to hide what once no man on earth could guess it formed the thorny aureole of hard unsanctified distress her lips were open not a sound came through the parted lines of red whate'er it was the hideous wound in silence and in secret bled no sigh relieved her speechless woe she had no voice to speak her dread and in her lurid eyes there shone the dying flame of life's desire made mad because its hope was gone and kindled at the leaping fire of jealousy and fierce revenge and strength that could not change nor tire shade of a shadow in the glass oh set the crystal surface free pass as the fairer visions pass nor ever more return to be the ghost of a distracted hour that heard me whisper i am she end of poem this recording is in the public domain a difference by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist first in my heart why she is on my heart there is no other though i in her esteem have but a part 
and many a brother first in my love i have no other love nor recollection yet many names are writ my name above in her affection first in my life tell me that she must die my life is over tell her that i am dead she'll give a sigh for her old lover end of poem this recording is in the public domain I have forged me in sevenfold heats by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I have forged me in sevenfold heats a shield from foes and lovers, and no one knows the heart that beats beneath the shield that covers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Every Man for His Own Hand by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist I may not call what many call divine, And yet my faith is faith in its degree. I worship at a dim and lonely shrine On bended knee. The secret grace of faith's celestial part I hoard up safely, for mine own self's own within the hidden chambers of the heart i love alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the brera by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist full many a painter in the early days dreamt that he saw the lord and dreaming smiled yet saw he nothing save a little child the baby angels round him singing praise nothing he saw except the heavenward gaze the pure compassion of the undefiled or else a man of sorrows patient mild his thoughts our thoughts his ways our human ways thou only leonardo didst behold that which their eyes desiring sought in vain and if since thou wert cast in mortal mould not all thy hand might do was free from stain all that was not immortal making old time painted out and left the vision plain end of poem this recording is in the public domain regina by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist my queen her sceptre did lay down she took from her head the golden crown worn by right of her royal birth her purple robe she cast aside and the scarlet vestures of her pride that was the pride of the earth in her nakedness was she queen of the world herself and me my queen took up her sceptre bright her crown more radiant than the light the rubies gleaming out of the gold she donned her robe of purple rare and did a deed that none may dare that makes the blood run cold and in her bravery is she queen of herself the world and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain At First by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The grief of age is not the grief of youth. A child is still a child, even in his grieving. Yet his first sorrow is, in very truth, dark, past believing. 
when first he wanders forth in early spring nor heeds among the flowers each gay newcomer when first he hates the happy birds that sing the sun that shines in summer end of poem this recording is in the public domain an anniversary by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist three years is it only three a weary while has passed since then the world of nature and of men is older by an age to me three years and is it then so long i thought it happened yesterday how is it with thee far away in the white world of palm and song end of poem this recording is in the public domain over the hills and far away by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist all around was dumb and still dumb and still as any stone we went together over the hill but i came back alone all around was grey and dun grey and dun by sea and shore when twilight fell my love saw one where she saw two before all around was barren ground barren ground lay far and near i left him with a gaping wound and what had i to fear when she asks me what befell what befell on lady day i her lord that love her well whisper in her ear and say all around was dumb and still dumb and still as any stone we went together over the hill but i came back alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain eyes by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist eyes what are they coloured glass where reflections come and pass open windows by them sit beauty learning love and wit searching cross-examiners comforts holy ministers starry silences of soul music past the lips control fountains of unearthly light prisons of the infinite End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gifts by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist I tossed my friend a wreath of roses Wet with early dew, the garland of the morn He lifted it and on his brow he set a crackling crown of thorn against my foe i hurled a murderous dart he caught it in his hand i heard him laugh i saw the thing that should have pierced his heart turn to a golden staff end of poem this recording is in the public domain master and guest by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist there came a man across the moor fell and foul of face was he he left the path by the cross-roads three and stood in the shadow of the door i asked him in to bed and board i never hated any man so he said he could not say me no he sat in the seat of my own dear lord now sit you by my side he said else may i neither eat nor drink 
you would not have me starve i think he ate the offerings of the dead i'll light you to your bed quoth i my bed is yours but light the way i might not turn aside nor stay i showed him where we twain did lie the cock was trumpeting the morn he said sweet love a long farewell you have kissed a citizen of hell and a soul was doomed when you were born mourn mourn no longer for your dear him may you never meet above the gifts that love hath given to love love gives away again to fear end of poem this recording is in the public domain Two songs by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The blossoming of love I sang, the streams adown the mountain sprang, and all the world with music rang. A cloud has darkened heaven above, I only hear a moaning dove, I sing the withering of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Horror by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Thy body is no more thy house. It is become thy sepulchre. I cannot any more arouse the spirit that did inhabit there the brain's asleep before its time i would that thou hadst died outright and i had seen thee in thy prime go half to darkness half to light end of poem this recording is in the public domain he came unto his own and his own received him not by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. As Christ the Lord was passing by, he came one night to a cottage door. He came, a poor man, to the poor. He had no bed whereon to lie. He asked in vain for a crust of bread, standing there in the frozen blast. The door was locked and bolted fast. Only a beggar, the poor man said christ the lord went further on until he came to a palace gate there a king was keeping his state in every window the candles shone the king beheld him out in the cold he left his guests in the banquet hall he bade his servants tend them all i wait on a guest i know of old tis only a beggar man they said yes he said it is christ the lord he spoke to him a kindly word he gave him wine and he gave him bread now christ is lord of heaven and hell and all the words of christ are true he touched the cottage and it grew he touched the palace and it fell the poor man is become a king never was man so sad as he sorrow and sin on the throne make three he has no joy in mortal thing but the sun streams in at the cottage door that stands where once the palace stood and the workman toiling to earn his food was never a king before end of poem this recording is in the public domain One and All by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist God comfort all who mourn, I said, And I was thinking but of one. Oh, many another mourns his dead, For many a man his life is done. 
and i was thinking but of one i dare not say god comfort him tis not for me such words to say fast prisoned in my cloister dim for man and not for men i pray but oh god comfort all i say end of poem this recording is in the public domain mortal combat by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist it is because you were my friend i fought you as the devil fights whatever fortune god may send for once i set the world to rights and that was when i thrust you down and stabbed you twice and twice again because you dared take off your crown and be a man like other men End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. St. Andrews by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist While the sun was going down There arose a fairy town Not the town I saw by day Cheerless, joyless, dull and grey But a far fantastic place builded with ethereal grace shimmering in a tender mist that the slanting rays had kissed ere they let their latest fire touch with gold each slender spire there no men and women be mermen maidens of the sea combing out their tangled locks sit and sing among the rocks as their ruddy harps they sound with the seaweed twisted round in the shining sand below see the city downward go end of poem this recording is in the public domain winged words by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist as darting swallows skim across a pool whose tranquil depths reflect a tranquil sky so o'er the depths of silence dark and cool our winged words dart playfully and seldom break the quiet surface of the lake as they flit by end of poem this recording is in the public domain true to myself am i and false to all by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man true to myself am i and false to all fear sorrow love constrain us till we die but when the lips betray the spirit's cry the will that should be sovereign is a thrall therefore let terror slay me ere i call for aid of men let grief begrudge a sigh are you afraid unhappy no the lie about the shrinking truth stands like a wall and have you loved no never all the while the heart within my flesh is turned to stone yea none the less that i account it vile the heart within my heart makes speechless moan and when they see one face one face alone the stern eyes of the soul are moved to smile End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Go by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Go at the deepest, darkest dead of night, when no foot shall be stirring, save thine own. Go forth, unlighted to his couch alone 
and break his slumber with thy kisses light go while the deeds and characters of day are but as dreams and fleeting visions vain go take him to thy beating heart again ere all the world awake and find the way end of poem this recording is in the public domain Not Yet by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Time brought me many another friend That loved me longer New love was kind But in the end old love was stronger Years come and go No new year yet hath slain December And all that should have cried forget cries but remember end of poem this recording is in the public domain blue and white by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist blue is our lady's colour white is our lord's to-morrow i will wear a knot of blue and white cords that you may see it where you ride among the flashing swords o oh, banner white and sunny blue with prayer i wove thee for love the white for faith the heavenly hue and both for him so tender true him that doth love me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Our Lady by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Mother of God, no lady thou, common woman of common earth. Our Lady, ladies call thee now, but Christ was never of gentle birth, a common man of the common earth. For God's ways are not as our ways the noblest lady in the land would have given up half her days would have cut off her right hand to bear the child that was god of the land never a lady did he choose only a maid of low degree so humble she might not refuse the carpenter of galilee a daughter of the people she out she sang the song of her heart never a lady so had sung she knew no letters had no art to all mankind in woman's tongue hath israelitish mary sung and still for men to come she sings nor shall her singing pass away he hath filled the hungry with good things oh listen lords and ladies gay and the rich he hath sent empty away end of poem this recording is in the public domain he knoweth not that the dead are thine by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the weapon that you fought with was a word and with that word you stabbed me to the heart not once but twice you did it for the sword made no blood start they have not tried you for your life you go strong in such innocence as men will boast they have not buried me they do not know life from its ghost end of poem this recording is in the public domain the devil's funeral by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the devil is dead good people all who are the bearers that bear the pall one of them thinks he has slain god too with the self-same sword that satan slew one of them thinks he has saved god's life 
the devil was ever the god of strife a purple pall above him spread a king it is that is lying dead the worst of kings never ruled so well as this magnificent king of hell what is the guerdon of all his pains he is dead himself but hell remains he forged his coffin before he died twas made of gold that was seven times tried the glittering golden words of those who counted themselves his chiefest foes where will you bury him not on earth in poison flowers he would come to birth we will not cast him into the sea the winds and the waves would set him free lay him out straight on the funeral pyre all his life he has lived in fire and lo as the crackling flame burns bright satan transformed to an angel of light that he may work more utter woe than ever he worked when he dwelt below end of poem this recording is in the public domain Armida's Garden by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I have been there before thee, O oh my love, each winding way I know, and all the flowers, the shadowy cypress trees, the twilight grove, where rest in fragrant sleep the enchanted hours. I have been there before thee at the end there stands a gate through which thou too must pass when thou shalt reach it god in mercy send thou say no bitterer word love than alas end of poem this recording is in the public domain Confidence by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Even to one I dare not tell where lies my heaven, where lies my hell. But to the world will I confide what's hid from all the world beside. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Burial by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. How was it, I, I, that unmoved stood tearless in the funeral train, when it was you, you that I loved, whose earth was given to earth again? The highest heavens are holy ground, the song of birds, the dawn, the gloom in every perfect sight and sound i bow fair love before thy tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain mandragora by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist pour me red wine from out the venice flask pour faster faster yet the joy of ruby thought i do not ask bid me forget breathe slumberous music round me sweet and slow to honeyed phrases set into the land of dreams i long to go bid me forget lay not the roses bloom against my cheek with chill tears she is wet the wrinkled poppy is the flower i seek bid me forget where is delight and what are pleasures now moths that a garment fret the world is turned memorial crying thou shalt not forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Merciful Night by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. For a picture by Burne Jones called The Merciful Night. 
the knight is kneeling before a large crucifix his enemy riding away looks back at him merciful christ from thee it was not hid merciful christ who sawst what this man did this man in thine own image christ forbid in thine own image nay this image here hath more of thee i never yet knew fear i tremble lest that soul to thee be dear yet and thou lovest all souls thou lovest this thy life thou gavest that it might live in bliss although it should betray thee with a kiss how oft shall i forgive seventy times seven i had rather have lost my life here than forgiven i had rather have lost my life there in thy heaven my heart is stone and doubts hast thou a heart see i forgive with thee i have no part a painted corpse a thing of wood thou art thereat he saw no more a thing of wood thereat christ came into the holy rood thereat he knelt and knew that christ made good the foe whose hatred love could never tire looked on a sudden back with fierce desire and felt forgiveness burn like coals of fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain Invocation by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Come, long-awaited dawn of wondrous night, come, heart's delight. The moon hath risen, the sun of lovers' eyes. The stars are fainting now, the pale moth flies. The air is still, the bird of darkness cries. Spirits of sleep, beware and come not near tremble and fear when with excess of life the senses numb call to the lips of love and they be dumb then to restore defeated nature come end of poem this recording is in the public domain doubt by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist two forms of darkness are there one is night when i have been an animal and feared i knew not what and lost my soul nor dared feel aught save hungry longing for the light and one is blindness absolute and bright the sun's rays smote me till they masked the sun the light itself was by the light undone the day was filled with terrors and affright then did i weep compassionate of those who see no friend in god in satan's host no foes end of poem this recording is in the public domain On the Hearth Rug by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Little tongue of red brown flame, whither go you? Whence I came, sending on a courier spark to explore the chimney dark. Once I was a sunbeam fair, darting through the awakened air, quickly to a green leaf gone, on a forest tree I shone steely lightning struck the bough and i sank into a slough many ages there i lay ere i saw the all-father day now i sparkle once again flashing light and warmth to men ere like all things that are bright i rejoin the all-mother night end of poem this recording is in the public domain
at dead of night by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist there was not a moon but half a moon and the stars were faint and few there were clouds full soon at the night's high noon and a rollicking wind that blew there were three that bled there was one that led where they fought with four and three the silvery swords were crimson red and the grass was a sight to see they laughed as they fell and they died right well and they called to their foes for more we will go to hell but the tale will tell of the seven that fought with four end of poem this recording is in the public domain song by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist when my love did what i would not what i would not i could hear his merry voice upon the wind crying fairest shut your eyes for see you should not love is blind when my love said what i say not what i say not with a joyous laugh he quieted my fears whispering fairest hearken not for here you may not hath love ears when my love said will you longer let me seek it blind and deaf is she that doth not bid me come all my heart said murmuring dearest can i speak it love is dumb End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Witch by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I have walked a great while over the snow, and I am not tall nor strong. My clothes are wet, and my teeth are set, and the way was hard and long i have wandered over the fruitful earth but i never came here before oh lift me over the threshold and let me in at the door the cutting wind is a cruel foe i dare not stand in the blast my hands are stone and my voice a groan and the worst of death is past i am but a little maiden still my little white feet are sore oh lift me over the threshold and let me in at the door her voice was the voice that women have who plead for their heart's desire she came she came and the quivering flame sank and died in the fire it never was lit again on my hearth since i hurried across the floor to lift her over the threshold and let her in at the door end of poem this recording is in the public domain a huguenot by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist oh a gallant set were they as they charged on us that day a thousand riding like one their trumpets crying and their white plumes flying and their sabres flashing in the sun oh a sorry lot were we as we stood beside the sea each man for himself as he stood we were scattered and lonely a little force only of the good men fighting for the good but i never loved more on sea or on shore the ringing of my own true blade like lightning it quivered and the hard helms shivered as i sang none maketh me afraid end of poem this recording is in the public domain Eleanor by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Plant not the lily here, no lily lies below. The crimson rose to her was dear, and the summer of the year, not the snow. 
sing no lament she loved a merry song for her the birds were sent to her the humming of the golden bees and the murmur of trees shall be long end of poem this recording is in the public domain self question by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist is this wide world not large enough to fill thee nor nature nor that deep man's nature art are they too thin too weak and poor to still thee thou little heart dust art thou and to dust again returnest a spark of fire within a beating clod should that be infinite for which thou burnest must it be god end of poem this recording is in the public domain a daydream by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the murmur of the city sounded on below the plaintive murmur of a hymn that sabbath day the edge of life was gone a veil of smoke made all the houses dim my eyes forgot to see and lo they saw a sight that filled my shaken soul with awe for i was in the land where all lay clear betwixt the sunshine and the shining sand and nothing far there was and nothing near you might have touched the mountains with your hand and yet i looked upon them o'er a plain vast as the vastness of the untravelled main tall rows of pillars stems of flowering stone sprang up around me in their ordered growth here sat a maid and there an ancient crone the straight bright shafts of light illumined both no shadow was there and no sound the hum of brooding silence kept the temple dumb three tombs of kings each with his corners three shut out three spaces of the golden sky clear flat and bright they hid no mystery but painted mummies of a scarlet dye that lay embalmed there many a long term safe from unkindly damp and creeping worm deep set beneath the sibyl's wrinkled brow the ancient woman's eyes were full of song they held the voice of time and even now i mind me how the burden rolled along for i forgot the music of the birds and music's self and music knit to words then did i turn me to the maiden's eyes and they were as the sea brimming and deep within them lay the secret of the skies the rhythmical tranquillity of sleep they were more quiet than a windless calm among the isles of spices and of balm now music is an echo in mine ear and common stillness but the lack of noise for the true music i shall never hear nor the true silence mother of all joys they dwell apart on that enchanted ground where not a shadow falls and not a sound end of poem this recording is in the public domain i ask of thee love nothing but relief by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i ask of thee love nothing but relief thou canst not bring the old days back again for i was happy then not knowing heavenly joy not knowing grief end of poem this recording is in the public domain
sun and storm by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist open your gates ye skies and let the host of gathered waters fall and drown the earth your hour of utmost terror is the ghost of that when grief had birth the all resplendent spring the pomp of may through white and golden flowers the virgin light ah but a thin grey shadow of the day when joy was at her height end of poem this recording is in the public domain l'oiseau bleu by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the lake lay blue below the hill o'er it as i looked there flew across the waters cold and still a bird whose wings were palest blue the sky above was blue at last the sky beneath me blue in blue a moment ere the bird had passed it caught his image as he flew End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jealousy by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The myrtle bush grew shady down by the ford. Is it even so, said my lady, even so, said my lord. The leaves are set too thick together for the point of a sword the arras in your room hangs close no light between you wedded one of those that see unseen is it even so said the king's majesty even so said the queen end of poem this recording is in the public domain shadow by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist child of my love though thou be bright as day though all the sons of joy laugh and adore thee thou canst not throw thy shadow self away where thou dost come the earth is darker for thee when thou dost pass a flower that saw the sun sees him no longer the hosts of darkness are thou radiant one through thee made stronger end of poem this recording is in the public domain prosperity by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist thy blessings are an armoured band with a javelin and a dart with a spear to wound the heart round about they stand soul in honour glorified be thou aware of deadly sin cruelty's the javelin the spear is pride end of poem this recording is in the public domain news by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist ask me not how it came if i sought it my very thoughts are flame since first i thought it i saw it not with eyes it was not spoken these mysteries have neither sign nor token ah say not is it true in faith uphold me i know not how i knew my heart told me end of poem this recording is in the public domain awake by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the wailing wind doth not enough despair the sea for all her sobbing hath the moon 
i cannot find my heart's cry anywhere fain to complain alone the whistle of the train that like a dart pierces the darkness as it hurries by hath not enough of sadness and my heart is stifled for a cry end of poem this recording is in the public domain song by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist prisoned within these walls i think of you lightly the snowflake falls the rain too now it is rain and now the snow again within i know not how tis only rain End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fair as a Dream by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist What vision of the softly sleeping eyes Shone like the vision that they could not see? Night, quivering with the children of the skies Resplendently fair is her dream but ah what fairest dream is half so lovely as the dawn of day when the first golden gleam chases the rose and dove colour away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Marriage by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. No more alone sleeping, no more alone waking, thy dreams divided, thy prayers in twain, thy merry sisters, tonight forsaking, never shall we see thee, maiden, again, never shall we see thee, thine eyes glancing, flashing with laughter and wild in glee under the mistletoe kissing and dancing wantonly free there shall come a matron walking sedately low-voiced gentle wise in reply tell me oh tell me can i love her greatly all for her sake must the maiden die End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Piano by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. O oh, casket of sweet sounds, wherein there lieth a sound to lull the weary man to sleep, a sound to make the hard and tearless weep a sound that every sound on earth defieth and only to one hand on earth replieth what time her fingers varied measure keep to drag it wooingly from out the deep that softly wooed by others only sigheth if i might win me that remembered strain by reverent lifting of thy gleamy lid i could forget the sorrowful refrain of all the world shall do is doing did pandora's prisoned hope was not more vain the casket's there the melody is hid end of poem this recording is in the public domain On a Bas Relief of Pelops in Hippodamia by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. On a Bas Relief of Pelops in Hippodamia, which was wrecked and lay many years under the sea. Thus did a nameless and immortal hand make of rough stone the thing least like to life, the husband and the wife that the Most High, ere his creation, planned 
hundreds of years they lay unsunned unscanned where the waves cut more smoothly than the knife what time the winds tossed them about in strife and filled those lips and eyes with the soft sand art that from nature stole the human form by slow device of brain by simple strength lent it to nature's artless force to keep so with the human sculptor wrought the storm to round those lines of beauty till at length a perfect thing was rescued from the deep end of poem this recording is in the public domain in dispraise of the moon by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist i would not be the moon the sickly thing to summon owls and bats upon the wing for when the noble sun is gone away she turns his night into a pallid day she hath no air no radiance of her own that world unmusical of earth and stone she wakes her dim uncoloured voiceless hosts ghost of the sun herself the sun of ghosts the mortal eyes that gaze too long on her of reason's piercing ray defrauded are light in itself doth feed the living brain that light reflected but makes darkness plain End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Witch's Wood by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. There was a wood, a witch's wood. All the trees therein were pale. They bore no branches green and good but as it were a grey nun's veil they talked and chattered in the wind from morning dawn to set of sun like men and women that have sinned whose thousand evil tongues are one their roots were like the hands of men grown hard and brown with clutching gold their foliage women's tresses when the hair is withered thin and old there never did a sweet bird sing for happy love about his nest the clustered bats on evil wing each hollow trunk and bough possessed and in the midst a pool there lay of water white as though a scare had frightened off the eye of day and kept the moon reflected there End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wilderspin by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. In the little red house by the river, when the short night fell, beside his web sat the weaver, weaving a twisted spell mary and the saints deliver my soul from the nethermost hell in the little red house by the rushes it grew not dark at all for day dawned over the bushes before the night could fall where now a torrent rushes the brook ran thin and small in the little red house a chamber was set with jewels fair there did a vine clamber along the clambering stair and grapes that shone like amber hung at the windows there will the loom not cease whirring will the house never be still is never a horseman stirring out and about on the hill was it the cat purring did some one knock at the sill to the little red house a rider was bound to come that night a cup of sheeny cider stood ready for his delight 
and like a great black spider the weaver watched on the right to the little red house by the river i came when the short night fell i broke the web forever i broke my heart as well michael and the saints deliver my soul from the nethermost hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain unwelcome by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist we were young we were merry we were very very wise and the door stood open at our feast when there passed us a woman with the west in her eyes and a man with his back to the east oh still grew the hearts that were beating so fast the loudest voice was still the jest died away on our lips as they passed and the rays of july struck chill the cups of red wine turned pale on the board the white bread black as soot the hound forgot the hand of her lord she fell down at his foot lo let me lie where the dead dog lies ere i sit me down again at a feast when there passes a woman with the west in her eyes and a man with his back to the east end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lady of trees by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist by a lake below the mountain hangs the birch as if in glee the lake had flung the moon a fountain she had turned it to a tree therefore do her dull leaves glimmer like the waves that mothered them therefore flits a moony shimmer always round her curved stem End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. February 1900 by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Spring and the flowers return. The world is gay. Once more the old sun on the ancient earth shines forth and brings a million buds to birth where are those sons of ours we sent away spring and the flowers return but where are they tarry hard winter ice-bound stiff and grey thou art as we are full of darkest fears weep with us let us feel thy chilly tears we are not fit for joy we can but say spring and the flowers return but where are they end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dumb by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. A voice, a voice, I cried. No music stills the craving heart that would an answer find. No song of birds, no murmuring of the wind, no. Not that awful harmony of mind, the silent stars above the silent hills end of poem this recording is in the public domain when mary through the garden went by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist when mary through the garden went there was no sound of any bird and yet because the night was spent the little grasses lightly stirred the flowers awoke the lilies heard 
when mary through the garden went the dew lay still on flower and grass the waving palms above her sent their fragrance out as she did pass no light upon the branches was when mary through the garden went her eyes for weeping long were dim the grass beneath her footsteps bent the solemn lilies white and slim these also stood and wept for him when mary through the garden went she sought within the garden ground one for whom her heart was rent one who for her sake was bound one who sought and she was found end of poem this recording is in the public domain high wind by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist the clouds before him rushed as they were racing home to end the day the flying hair of the beeches flew out to the east as he went through only the hills unshaken stood the lake was tossed into a flood she flung her curling wavelets hoar in wrath on the distracted shore which of the elements hath sinned what hath angered thee o wind thou in all the earth dost see naught but it enrageth thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain wither away by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist where are you going master mine mistress of mine farewell pledge me a cup of golden wine light shall be dark and darkness shine before i tell oh go you by the fir woods blue and by the fairy's trysting tree no for the path is grown with rue and nightshade's purple fruit since you walked there with me oh go you by the pastures high a grassy road and daisies fair no for i saw them fade and die on the bright evening love that i sat with you there end of poem this recording is in the public domain beware by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist her yellow hair is soft and her soft eyes are as the doves for meekness only feel the softness of the hand in mine that lies the sheath is velvet but the sword is steel soft are her footsteps and her low replies the lover's woe like softest music heal ah let him still remember and be wise the sheath is velvet but the sword is steel end of poem this recording's in the public domain the king's guard by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the king was an irish king and shook a bough with golden apples on it when he required silence a henchman entering his room after the golden apples had sounded fell down dead when the golden apples shook in the house of the irish king never a clerk read from his book never a maid might sing the king on his throne sat all alone the ways of the world are lies if i hear a whisper near he that whispers dies then one arose our ancient foes are galloping hither fast he that to the king goes that moment is his last come weal or woe to the king i go i am his henchman still i will warn him of his ancient foe and die an if he will through the silent hall he crept silent as the tomb every footfall as he stepped echoed about the room 
the living they were as the dead and as the dead went he the frightened eyes of the good and wise followed him silently he heard as it had been a roar the scuffling feet of a rat when he came to the king's door he dared not knock thereat when he came to the king's throne he shook in every limb the king on his throne sat all alone and spake no word to him open his eyes the henchman prayed or ever it be too late all his men are sore afraid and his ancient foe at the gate open his eyes the king prayed or his tongue will scare away the armed angels all arrayed the heralds of the day the king on his throne sat compassed round with the ban and the arriere ban of the army that with them is found who put no trust in man the spirit from the henchman passed fled to the radiant ring his body on the ground was cast but still he guards the king end of poem this recording is in the public domain renaissance gentleman by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist oh not for that they ought they fought when they fought but they fought for the glory of the fight and they wedded while they wooed ere the fury of their mood went out in the blackness of the night oh boldly led they then the life of living men in their glory their bravery and pride they were cruel and strong on the right side and the wrong and gallantly gallantly they died end of poem this recording is in the public domain the white women by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist from a legend of malay told by hugh clifford where dwell the lovely wild white women folk mortal to man they never bowed their necks beneath the yoke they dwelt alone when the first morning broke and time began taller are they than man and very fair their cheeks are pale at sight of them the tiger in his lair the falcon hanging in the azure air the eagles quail the deadly shafts their nervous hands let fly are stronger than our strongest in their form larger more beauteous carved amazingly and when they fight the wild white women cry the war cry of the storm their words are not as ours if man might go among the waves of ocean when they break and hear them hear the language of the snow falling on torrents he might also know the tongue they speak pure are they as the light they never sinned but when the rays of the eternal fire kindle the west their tresses they unbind and fling their girdles to the western wind swept by desire lo maidens to the maidens then are born strong children of the maidens and the breeze dreams are not in the glory of the morn seen through the gates of ivory and horn more fair than these and none may find their dwelling in the shade primeval of the forest oaks they hide one of our race lost in an awful glade saw with his human eyes a wild white maid and gazing died end of poem this recording is in the public domain lines to a tree by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist thou art the sun and the wind and the driving shower 
thou hast worn the snow and clothed thyself in her flower lo there is living in thee the ancient light the sons of the morning sang hosanna at thy creation old thou art and young as an ever enduring nation thou art a thousand shapes of the day and a thousand shapes of the night thou that shadowest ever a bounded circlet of earth who shall sing thy end that sang thy wonderful birth haply the fire that was once thy friend shall turn to thy foe fall on thee lightning swift as the gleam of a sword and the flash rend thy cherishing bark till it burst in twain with a crash scorch the leaves of thy crown and lay thee low solemn sentinel leaving never thy chosen post haply the waves shall carry thee wind blown and tempest tossed no more a nest of the birds but a home for wandering men merchants warriors mighty captains of them that roam thou shalt sink as they sink to the stillness under the foam fishes silent and swift glide in thy branches then haply thou shalt be made the sails of a grinding mill thou shalt rejoice in the sun and the wind be thy playfellow still whirling and whirling to change into bread the golden corn haply of thee shall be made at the last a quivering flame that shall return in light in the glory of light that came fire shall befriend thee yet o marvellous child of the morn End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Other Men May Never Care by Mary Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Other men may never care What thy thoughts, thy instincts were Care not thou Where the poet's halo bright long years hence in their despite on thy brow narrow not thy walk to keep pace with those who half asleep judge thee now gain the goal and thou shalt hear mighty voices in thine ear blessed art thou not the many not the few keep thou ever in thy view steadfast now only this one thing fulfil thine own heart's tremendous will ay but how end of poem this recording is in the public domain Night is Fallen Within, Without, by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org, by Newgate Novelist. Night is fallen within, without, come, love, soon. I am weary of my doubt. The golden fire of the sun is out, the silver fire of the moon. Love shall be a child in me when they are cinders grey with the earth and with the sea with the star that shines on thee and the night and day end of poem this recording is in the public domain i saw a stable low and very bare by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i saw a stable low and very bare a little child in a manger the oxen knew him had him in their care to men he was a stranger the safety of the world was lying there and the world's danger end of poem this recording is in the public domain
death by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist one o thou slight word most like to breath and made of a few letters merely what's in thee terror of flesh the spirit's ecstasy mysterious voiceless shadow of a shade they that fear nothing else of thee afraid do call thee sleep and passing thou setst free infinite shapes of all a man may be yet at thy nothingness he shrinks dismayed if thou wert not the poets had been dumb and music silent yea majestic art had never sought and found her better part nor by the living eyes betrayed the heart great prophecy were an unmeaning hum what is no longer holding what's to come two i have wept for those who on this turning earth had lived more years than i who were to me the aim and goal of my felicity the dear reward of effort crown of worth and i have wept for babes who died at birth most deeply moved that i should never see the flower and fruit of all the days to be a younger youth than mine a merrier mirth but never ere this day i felt the sting of terror lest my burning tears should fall for one who felt when first i felt the spring heard from the wood the self-same cuckoo call heard the same robin in the autumn sing was one with me in life in love in all three bid me remember o oh my gracious lord the flattering words of love are merely breath oh not in roses wreathe the shining sword bid me remember o oh my gracious lord the bitter taste of death wrap not in clouds of dread for me that hour when i must leave behind this house of clay when the grass withers and the shrunken flower bid me o oh lord in that most dreadful hour not fall but fly away end of poem this recording is in the public domain tis not love that is dead by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist tis not love that is dead but hope his sister fair they breathed the self-same air on the same food they fed the soul of love with awful strength was filled by passion but his sister hope was killed end of poem this recording is in the public domain Bamborough by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The sun is not the sun, but very light. Is this the sand that drives across the sand, caught by the wind? Nay, but a royal flight of blessed spirits, sweeping through the land, urged by the spirit. And the living sky is heaven indeed my heaven while you are by end of poem this recording is in the public domain i chanced to see upon a day by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i chanced to see upon a day of blue beflecked with white and grey a crowd of busy men and an old hag 
the crossing wires above the street two friends that did each other greet and england's flag end of poem this recording is in the public domain come back to me my swallow by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist come back to me my swallow and leave me not forlorn into the woods i follow the footsteps of the morn i thread the rustling hollow before the day is born come back to me my swallow and leave me not forlorn the light was dark without thee my bird of april days i almost came to doubt thee when thou hadst gone thy ways the sunshine round about thee into the land of rays the light was dark without thee my bird of april days end of poem this recording is in the public domain Thistledown by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Find me, oh my true love, find me, all the words by love made strongest, all the words that last the longest, for an oath, an oath to bind me. In the east the dawn grows brighter, on the wind I hear a whistle, light the down upon the thistle yea true love but i am lighter end of poem this recording is in the public domain pride by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist o oh, mortal virtue and immortal sin how often hast thou led the fool aright sent forth a shivering coward to the fight and made the worst man win thine are the laurel's giddy pleasure lost the crown that hard endeavour hardly earned and glory woos thee whom thy foot hath spurned with all her host he that hath thee though poor in seeming wealth is not bereft he that hath all beside lives like a beggar being poor in pride and dies by stealth end of poem this recording is in the public domain sun and wind by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist deep in the heart of winter lies a day bright from the treasuries of perfect spring life stirs and wakes in each created thing december sleeps and dreams and dreams of may deep in the heart of spring when every flower is radiant comes a day of bitter wind o oh, blossom-laden boughs untimely thinned grown for december holds no darker hour end of poem this recording is in the public domain affection by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the earth that made the rose she also is thy mother and not i the flame wherewith thy maiden spirit glows was lighted at no hearth that i sit by i am as far below as heaven above thee were i thine angel more i could not love thee bid me defend thee thy danger over human strength shall lend me a hand of iron and a heart of steel to strike to wound to slay and not to feel but if you chide me i am a weak defenceless child beside thee 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Goodness by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Shall I be good? I dare not be as he. I dare not sin. Is that the good in me? Call me not good, said he, when once he trod this earth. There is but one good, that is God. shall i be good vainly i try for satan is more strong braver than i each time i fail before him from the rude look down on me o oh god to me be good end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wanderers by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Love is a Rome, and many roads there be leading to that great city of delight. Old, new, religious, everything but free. A dream by day, a solid town at night. All roads are good for entrance, none for flight and every traveller sees what he would see the roads lead hither over many a hill through countries parted by the salt sea foam and many names they bear affliction still the safest but at length they all lead home accuse us not of wandering at our will Life's clearest voice it is that bids us roam. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Depart from me, I know thee not, by Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Depart from me, I know thee not within the temple have i sought thee and many a time have sold and bought thee in that unhallowed holy spot depart from me i know thee not depart from me i know thee not full oft among the poor i found thee there did i grieve neglect and wound thee i never strove to share thy lot depart from me i know thee not i know thee not abide with me more than aught else do i admire thee above all earthly things desire thee i am thy prisoner make me free i know thee not abide with me end of poem this recording is in the public domain At a Friend's Meeting by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by a Newgate Novelist. Strangers are we and pilgrims here, so sing we every Sabbath day. But surely pilgrimage is dear, we linger so upon the way. Is that the home, the father kind? Is that the country of our birth? were we created deaf and blind that we prefer the toilsome earth its setting sun its changing sea the day the dark refreshing night the winds that wander wide and free are dearer than the land of light though age may sit in beauty's place the eyes that growing old wax dim are fairer than the youthful face of cherubim and seraphim and when we lay them in the ground the sting of death is living still although we know that they have found the city set upon an hill 
we sigh and weep and pray for rest and murmur that the way is long alas the islands of the blest are only blessed in psalm and song nay not in psalm for david knew the dread that pierces like a sword and had the faith to say it too the dead they praise not thee o lord the life that we so much despise the sun hath deigned with us to share shall we find favour in thine eyes by slighting what he made his care we feel more truly than we speak thou art the life and thou hast said that he who lives however weak shall not be numbered with the dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain knowledge by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist let weaker souls at his decree repine to us eternity in time was given whene'er we parted twas your death and mine whene'er we met again why then twas heaven now let the tempest rise the fierce wind blow and shake the house of life from floor to rafter whichever goes whichever stays we know both death and what comes after end of poem this recording is in the public domain unity by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist the sense of fellowship is grown a radiant mystery the dark is shot with light the stone is light unto the eyes that see no more the wild confused main is tossed about with storms of fear the sea is singing and the rain is music to the ears that hear end of poem this recording is in the public domain wasted by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist thou show'st thy beauty unto all the men that meet thee by the way and one day thou shalt render it again to death and to decay thou givest thy wisdom to a chosen few as twere some precious book yet were there only two or three that knew the art therein to look thou givest thy laughter only unto one he hath no eyes to see give when his bitter jest with thee is done thy tears to me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fire the lamp and i were alone together by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the fire the lamp and i were alone together out in the street it was wild and windy weather the fire said once i lived and now i shine i was a wood once and the wind was mine the lamp said once i lived and was the sun the fire and i in those old days were one the fire said once i lived and saw the spring i die in smoke to warm this mortal thing the lamp said i was once alive and free in smoke i die to let this mortal see then i remembered all the beasts that died that i might eat and might be satisfied then i remembered how my feet were shod thought of the myriad lives on which i trod and sighed to feel that as i went my way i was a murderer ninety times a day 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Witness by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. I did not see. How could I know? Down in the little wood, he and he together stood, one above, one below. The face of heaven was overcast. The moon among the driven clouds sailed fast. I did not see. I turned my eyes away, and the moon did not look. If she, the sentinel, her post forsook, what was I then that I should stay? The face of heaven was overcast. The moon among the driven clouds sailed fast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Venita by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Wind and waters ring the bells that rang for them of high degree. Trumpets are the sounding shells in the city under the sea. Where a queen was wont to hide her outwearied majesty, swim the fishes open eyed in the city under the sea many a street lies broad and fair many a palace fair and free neither a man nor woman there in the city under the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Train by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org, by Newgate Novelist. A green eye and a red in the dark, thunder, smoke, and a spark. It is there, it is here, flashed by, whither will the wild thing fly? It is rushing, tearing through the night, rending her gloom in its flight it shatters her silence with shrieks what is it the wild thing seeks alas for it hurries away them that are fain to stay hurrah for it carries home lovers and friends that roam where are you time and space the world is a little place your reign is over and done you are one end of poem this recording is in the public domain flowers of the field by mary coleridge read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist the flowers of the field were sun and dew by morning and by night oh twas water of fire in the field that grew with colours of delight oh the flowers of the field are honey and hay they bloom in the field no more oh men took all that they could away the bees they went before oh end of poem this recording is in the public domain Companionship by Mary Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The men and women round thee, what are they? Frail as the flowers, less lasting than the snow. If there be angels flitting in the day, who knows those angels? Who shall ever know? let them alone and go thou on thy way they came like dreams like dreams they come and go nay the companions of thy timeless hours are dreams dreamt first for thee by them of old 
that thou mightst dream them after these are powers unending and unaging never cold white as the driven snow fair as the flowers these be thy verities to have to hold end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the arrival of a visitor by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist farewell my loneliness i that had thought to curse thee come to bless deep skies and glowing stars in thee i found a stream ran through the sandy wilderness and roses blossomed on the desert ground beloved solitude no voices over eager harsh or rude mar the sweet music of thy gracious hours among the crowd of those too near and dear too often have i known disgust and fear the isolation of those glorious powers that in self-knowledge are not not ourselves but ours End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lo, when the house is empty, come the dead. By Mary Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Lo, when the house is empty, come the dead. And once again they say the words they said, breaking the charmed silence of the grave i have sat lonely with my closest friend as in the throng ah wherefore to what end the dead have power to give more than the living gave lo when the house is empty live the dreams of the old poets and my chamber seems a palace for the women long ago that whilst the living shadows round me move are shadows also dumb remote from love vain figures vainly mouthing at a show end of poem this recording is in the public domain street lanterns by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist country roads are yellow and brown we mend the roads in london town never a hansom dare come nigh never a cart goes rolling by an unwonted silence steals in between the turning wheels quickly ends the autumn day and the workman goes his way leaving midst the traffic rude one small isle of solitude lit throughout the lengthy night by the little lantern's light jewels of the dark have we brighter than the rustics be over the dull earth are thrown topaz and the ruby stone end of poem this recording is in the public domain where a roman villa stood above fryberg by mary coleridge read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist on alien ground breathing an alien air a roman stood far from his ancient home and gazing murmured ah the hills are fair but not the hills of rome descendant of a race to roman's kin where the old son of empire stood i stand the self-same rocks fold the same valley in untouched of human hand over another shines the self-same star another heart with nameless longing fill 